G'day, Andrew from Miss Moo RC, back for another video. This is a video I wanted to do for a while about nitro engine braking. Um, I'm not here to say you should be doing that, or why aren't you doing that? I um, just wanted to go through some pros and cons of the oil bath system, which we have the RC target machine behind me, and the more traditional heat cycling method, whether that be your normal braking bench or even if you just do it at, in your car on the bench. Um, just wanted to go through both systems, give some pros and cons, a bit more information. Hopefully that helps people, um, helps with some of the confusion. Anyway, let's um, get a bit closer to this machine, fire it up, go through some of it in a bit more detail. Alrighty, so as I said, this is the RC Target oil bath machine that's commercially available at the moment. Um, there is the Ebus, um, which I don't believe you can buy at the moment, at the time of filming this video. Um, both machines work quite similar. Uh, obviously the Ebus is a um, machine built from scratch with full uh, intention and ideas in mind, so it's a, a probably a little bit better than the RC Target machine, because this started out as a $20 Walmart deep fryer, and they've um, built from there. So, um, as you can see here, we have temperature readout. You have a built-in timer control unit, um, which when you actually start the machine, will start counting down, and when you can adjust that, and when it gets to the end, it'll shut the machine off. You've got your um, RPM readout, and obviously your speed controller for getting to your desired RPM. Um, and then down the bottom here we have, um, which is your deep fryer part, just your, your temperature control for the heating element in the deep fryer. If we open it up, and you can see I've got the oil already in it, it's just draining out. You get different size plates or the 21 or the 12 engine for going where the head button would normally go, um, which is obviously open, hopefully you can see that, um, to allow oil to pass through. Uh, so I've removed the carburetor um, on the end of the crank here. Uh, we have a nut that goes into the drive coupling that's connected to the electric motor that operates the machine. The mount is obviously universal for either a 12 or a 21. Uh, you leave the back plate off to allow um, all the oil to pass through. So one of the negatives I see with this RC Target machine, and this is where I think the Ebus is a little bit more superior, is you always kind of feel like you're, you're chasing your speed and your temperature. Um, it's not like you can just set it and forget like you can with the Ebus, because the Ebus control unit's in full control. Um, so when the heating element comes in and out on the deep fryer on this machine, you get temperature fluctuation. And when that happens, obviously that alters your RPM. So that's why I say you, when you sit here and watch it, you kind of feel like you're, you're chasing it all the time. Um, what I would say, and this is where I wanted to address some of the confusion, doing uh, an oil bath, your it's it's not race ready when it's done. Um, this is really just step one. After you've done this, it really needs to go through a heat cycling process like you would with a uh, engine braking bench or you would in your car on the bench. Um, obviously, because no, you're trying to match the piston and the sleeve and go through that braking process. And it's... The braking process is tedious and boring, really. I mean, we all just want to get to the track and have a fang. Um, none of us want to sit here or, or be at the track running fuel through your car. That's we want to. We want to go full speed. Um, so you can see the extra display at the top, which gives you a resistance reading, which just helps duplicate engines you, you know you've got a reference from what it was when you started to roughly what you think it should be um 
when you finish, so you can keep an eye on that and help duplicate motors when you, you're running the same models through on a regular basis. Um, one thing I did want to say, obviously, disclaimer, we do have this as a service through Miss Mu RC, the, where you can send us your nitro engine and we can actually do the oil bath process for you, so you don't have to lash out and buy an expensive piece of equipment. Uh, and there are other services, I think EBUS Australia do a similar system using their EBUS machine. Um, so that's an option for everybody. Um, the advantage with this system, obviously, is you don't, you know, the weather could be raining outside like it currently is. Obviously, you can't go to the track. You probably don't want to be running nitro through in your garage when there's this much moisture in the air with the rain. Um, but you can, obviously, start the process with an oil bath. So you can see I've now turned the machine on and my temperature started to go up. Um, on the oil so we're just waiting for that to reach the uh, desired temperature before we start the machine um, so yeah I hope that um, gives you some information on the oil bath so now I'll um, move on to heat cycling and we can go through pros and cons with that now. okay so we'll move on and start talking about heat cycling um, the basic concept behind it is for the metals to expand and contract um, and that's vitally important for any nitro engine braking. Um, this is the same engine that um, we've, I had in the oil bar. Um, so I would now call this stage two, but obviously if you choose not to do oil bath, this is quite a common uh, nitro engine braking process. This braking bench is actually the RD Logix one, which I don't believe you can purchase anymore. I've had this for a number of years. Uh, there is the Huddy one um, commercially available, and they are quite popular. Um, you do need to get a starter, has a rubber wheel on the end that grabs onto the end of the prop to fire up the nitro engine. I believe the Huddy one actually comes with an attachment that you can connect to a drill, um, which is a cost saving, obviously. Not one extra thing you don't have to buy. Um, yeah, so basically you just put your engine in with your exhaust. Um, the prop goes onto the crank. You've got your um, throttle linkage control here. Normally there is a guard around the prop here um, to protect fingers from the spinning prop because when it's spinning at high RPM or when it is in operation you can't actually see the prop so it's quite easy to get your fingers in there and that's the last thing you want to happen so um, it is an idea to have that on I haven't put that on at this stage but I will before we um, fire the engine up. If your engine has gone down the oil bath process first the heat cycling um, stage is still vitally important, important for any nitro engine braking, um, but it's a lot easier the initial startup, and also the process is a lot shorter than having not done the oil bath. Um, yeah, so I'll just go through some of the um, cons as I see, and then we can talk about some of the pros. So the cons, obviously the idea with the prop is to create some load on the engine when it's in operating, or while it's operating. Um, the downside is it blows cool air over the engine, which is a negative, you don't want that to happen. Um, obviously you wanna keep this as a consistent temperature during the heat cycle process. Um, so you can wrap the head in alfoil, or I've seen people use uh, baked beans, yeah, baked beans tin or Milo tin over the head um, to stop the air passing through, um, which would work. Or you can also get, I think Sky RC make a, um, it's almost like an electric blanket type thing, that, an engine heater, I suppose they call it. And it sits over, wraps around the head of the engine and um, runs off a power source to help keep the engine warm. Um, before you start 
any engine during this process, it's vitally important that you preheat it. Um, I would not start a nitro engine below 90 degrees Celsius. Um, and then during the load of fuel, you want to keep it above that temperature. Um, yeah, that's vitally important. And then as you get towards the end of the tank, you don't want to run the, the engine out of fuel because um, when that happens, it, it um, starts to lean out, the temperature increases and it actually picks up in speed. So you don't want that to happen. Ideally, you want to keep it just at an idle. Okay, so that air from the prop uh, and keeping the engine at a consistent temperature using a brake-in bench like this is a negative. I mean, on the pro side, these are quite cost-effective to buy over an oil bath. And generally, there's no wear and tear on it, so they last a long time as you can see i've had this for a long time after you have run the engine for a while and you're in that cooling down phase it's vitally important that you keep the engine at um, the piston at the bottom dead center um yeah obviously because as the metals start to contract you don't want it at the top of the stroke that's about it really uh, just wanted to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this if you've got any comments or feedback feel free to leave the comments below um, i hope this kind of addresses some confusion out there maybe because the oil bath is a new concept and people are a bit set in their ways um, they don't like it or a bit reserved towards it but um i just wanted to do this video to I'll go through some things in a bit more details and hopefully address any uh, concerns that anyone had. Um, yeah, thank you for watching.